Hello folks and welcome to the next instalment of One School. Now what I have for you today, I have assembled or found the best ones of Biome 1. In my opinion, whenever I see these ones in Level 1 or Biome 1, the caves, it makes me very happy because I know I've got a very solid foundation for wand crafting and spell building. So let's go and have a little look of what we got here. Now I use little nicknames for these. We have here the green wand, the fish wand, and one of the gold wands. There are two of them, but I have selected the best one that can be sort of made into a very powerful one. So let's dive in. The, the whole point of this video today is to try and make you understand what these ones are, what the numbers mean. I know there are still a lot of new players to Noita. So let's dive in and have a little look here. So here are some ones with some basic things on, with some special things on too. I'm just going to go through them first. I've configured them to be what I would like if I had a, a good run. So let's have a look at the green wand first and I'll explain after what's happening on all three of these. So the green wand with the energy orb on, very good, very good DPS here. And then the second one, the fish wand, which is a non-shuffle wand. Oh, how is he doing that? Naughty, naughty. And then the gold wand here, number three. Okay then, that seems pretty cool, man. What's going on here then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Green Wand has great stats, very good general DPS, it's a shuffle wand so that means you can't do your little things in order, you won't be able to reliably use doubling spells, chainsaws can be useful but I don't want to go too deep into chainsaws just yet because they are very very powerful. Now the fish wand here is very powerful because it is doing that non-shuffle effect. It's going from left to right. We have a doubler and a chainsaw and a bouncing spell here. And it's just doing that every time. And there's a little bit of magic that comes with doubling and chainsawing. It allows us to get a machine gun effect. But like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into that just yet. And of course, number three, if we look, doing a very reliable sort of thing here. Good early game DPS. It will get you very far in those early levels. But what is happening here? Let's understand this. It's a shuffler, so no left to right effect. It's pulling them randomly. It's pulling them randomly all around. But there are some chainsaws on there. Like I said, chainsaws are very special. They reduce recharge time, which is your reload time. But let's double back a bit because... You know, I've, I've given you a lot of information. It might not make a lot of sense here. But let's pull it back. Let's look at these stats and try and get an understanding here. So one number one, the green one. What's the crack then, mate? So it's a shuffler, as mentioned, so no left or writing. But we can see here the cast delay. Your cast delay is how quick that spell goes out from the wand. The recharge time is very agreeable at uh, 0.42, I would say that's very good, with a good mana base and a good mana recharge speed. So if we look at the spell here, the energy sphere, which is one of my favourites by the way, uh, we can see and also remember that some spells do add cast delay, they add recharge time, they can add or remove certain things, so always keep an eye out on that because it may throw you off. When you're doing your spells, you think, hey man, this looks cool, but all of a sudden my wand's gone all slow, what the hell, man? But it could be cast delay being added, so this energy sphere does do that, but it's still very reliable. Let me switch. And by the way, folks, this test dummy is not vanilla. We are using Goki's Things. It's a mod that can be found on the workshop. Has a whole host of things, but I've pulled back all of the settings. We are basically vanilla here, apart from having the test dummy. So you can see that I'm doing some damage to this. Very reliable damage. Bearing in mind, this the whole point of this video is for survival on biome 1, 2, maybe 3, if you've gotten very lucky with the spells. So yeah, the test dummy, doing a good old job here. And if you look up into the top right, folks, that mana drain down is what I would call fairly sustainable. Bearing in mind you're very rarely under heavy, heavy sustained fire. 
So an average DPS there of around 30 that will certainly serve you well. And if you're running around, you can wait for that blue bar to top up as well. So this is one of my favorite finds on Biome 1. If you see that green wand and it's got these suckers on, you're going to be in for a good time up until level 4, I would say. Depending on if you had some good backup wands to boot. And I'm going to switch over to the number three first, the gold one, because we're in non-shuffle town, so... Or sorry, shuffle town, because it has shuffle, yes. And what does that do? It doesn't do them in order. It's random, like your, your, like your old iPods. Anyone use iPods anymore? Jesus. But I'm being a bit cheesy here, because I have the magic chainsaws on. I'm going to take them off, and we're going to look at these numbers... So there are two gold ones on Biome 1. I call this the Chainsaw Cousin because the cast delay is very low, but the recharge time is a little bit up. So uh, so if we had some normal spells on there, it probably won't look very impressive. A little bit of a burst action going on here. It's all right, isn't it? It's okay. It's going to get you through the day if you're lucky. But, I don't have it here at the moment, but there is a cousin to this one, where it has a lower recharge time, and that's also very, very good. But I like to have this one because of that extended recharge time. Now, this can be modified into what I call like a machine gun or a fantastic chainsaw. Let us say that you have found some chainsaws, if you're very lucky, especially if you found them in the Biome 1 shop, or maybe even Biome 2, if you've got those chainsaws early on, like I have in my inventory here, you could really make this a beast. Uh, let's just have a look. So those sparks, still not that particularly good because of the spread. There is a relatively heavy spread on this at 8 degrees. It's going to be a little bit shotgunny. Mm, kind of is what it is. But it's very good. You can hack this into a machine gun. You can have it as a solo sort of chainsaw thing. A chainsaw wand even. Which is going to be absolutely excellent if you can get that onto biome too, because you'll be able to dig for those gold nuggets. Whoops, I've fallen in. You can dig for those gold nuggets. A tip for you, folks, for your chainsaws. You know you've got a great chainsaw wand. When you use the chainsaw spell, and it's a constant, a constant glow like this. You don't want it flickering like this because it's going to be kind of slow and rubbish. And another test for you that I call the Microsoft Paint Test. Let's put those back on, and we're going to fly around the edge of the temple here. If you pay attention to these the textures on the wall, you see that dark sort of black Microsoft Paint brush, Mario Paint whatever, that solid brush tool almost that we're doing. That is a fantastic indicator that you have got a mental chainsaw that's going to be really good, not only for traversal of the levels, you're going to be melting through those terrains, but also for the sort of risky among us here. Pay attention to the test dummy. Not only are you going to be carving up enemies, but if you have vampirism, Remember, the perk that lets you drink blood for health. You're going to be carving up those heesy boys. You're going to have blood for days. More blood for the blood god. And it's a very powerful, powerful, powerful damaging tool. Sometimes I just like to walk around with this on Biome 2, for example. Not so much Biome 3, because enemies on the heesy base will... Sorry, the snow zone are very ranged, they're shooting crap at you, so biome 2 if you're very lucky, it's very good, very very good, honestly, very powerful. But in terms of general attacking speed for the gold wand, like I said, you can chuck in a doubler here to just sort of help you along your way, because it's a shuffling wand, that doubling effect or chainsawing may not be as reliable as it would be on a non-shuffle wand so i'm just going to chuck on some things here kind of slow isn't it it's a 
it's okay. It's okay. You can really chuck stuff on. You can kind of see that Dublin kind of working from time to time. It's going to have that unreliable effect when you have a, a shuffle wand here. But it is what it is. You know, whatever. We'll leave it be. But if you see this, you can bring that recharge time down. If we look at those stats again, those chainsaws will remove. Let's have a little look-see. Minus 17 recharge. So as long as they're on that wand, for the most part, let's say for a newbie, that will bring down that reload time. That little orange bar, if you see in the top right there, that is your reload time. That's the recharge time. So what if we add those chainsaws again, just for science sake. Let's have three on there. Ah, all right then. Happy days. <laughs> and that's just an example. I don't really want to go too much into my favorite combinations of spells because you're going to be finding absolutely loads of different spells. I just kind of want to get you in the mindset that when you go on to Biome 1, you're going to see Mr. Green, Mr. Fishwand, Mr. Gold, and you're going to be thinking, all right, then that bloody Simo told me about these. I'm going to keep them by because there are some other crappy ones on Biome 1 that are just no good for no one honestly they're just rubbish i avoid them all the time if i see these three you're gonna be on for a good one so let's remove these chainsaws and i will just explain the stats for, for those that want to know again so shuffle obviously cast delay spells are pretty much going to go out instantaneously like i said the recharge is a little slow but that can be brought down with chainsaws or lightsabers Good mana base, good mana recharge, good capacity for chucking on those low mana cost spells like sparks. Remember, these are low mana ones too, so you must take into account the mana drain of the spells too, because that will just chug it down. But like I said, we're, we're dealing with early game survival here. But now... Let's have a little look at Blimmin' Fish Wand. I call it the Fish Wand, and the reason for that is it kind of looks like a cartoon fish bone. Do you see where I'm coming from with that? And it's just kind of stuck ever since. But probably the most important wand because it's a non-shuffle, and that means we will have left to right spell casting. What a concept. I have a little bit of a sort of hacked together thing here. You won't necessarily find a doubler and a chainsaw early game, but if you do, chuck them together like that because it's going to machine gun that last spell. I call it machine gunning. I'm not entirely sure if this is classified as spell wrapping. I don't want to get into that, but I think that's what's happening here. There are a lot of things that we will get into more formally down the way, like spell wrapping single spells cancelling cast delay effects there's a whole other kind of avenue for hacking spells together but for now we'll leave it simple so what's happening here then mm. so it's sometimes i can't even explain this myself but if you get a chainsaw and a doubler it will just kind of cancel what is normal so let me put a spark on is that gonna do itself again yes it is it's some witchcraft folks to be honest with you i would hate to say what i think and then it's wrong the things the neuter zeitgeist of spell wrapping and the magic and hacking of the wands often changes with updates but if you can get those chainsaws and doublers on the end generally speaking it may be different for you and your wands but for instance, let's chuck those on the end. Will we still have that? No. <laughs> Put that back. The doubler first. No. Oh, what's going on then? Okay. Honestly, I do this on stream and uh, I look like a complete idiot despite having 350 hours because to me as a player, it is a little bit random to get that sort of machine gunning sort of going on there. But if you can crack that get yourself a chainsaw and a doubler put stuff on the end put stuff at the beginning you know you're gonna get that sort of effect and this isn't a hacked a too hacked wand this is a wand you can find the only real sort of slight cheat is the chainsaw but like i said so i'm gonna show you perhaps something a bit more realistic here 
And remember, casting from left to right, it's a non-shuffle. Very important. So I'm going to chuck a doubler. I'm going to use two doublers, just for argument's sake here, to show you that what non-shuffles do, you see. So, one, two, recharge. One, one. Oh, sorry, let me do that again. One. So it's firing off both of those doubles, and then it's recharging, you see. So let's have a look at them all important stats. So the cast delay is a little bit up. It's going to be a little bit slower. But the recharge time is also a little bit lower as well. So it's very average. The mana of the wand is very reliable, as is the recharge time. Very viable and a very good early game wand. But what I've done here, we've got basically four sparks that are doing a, a fair amount of damage. Pretty decent, you know, it's going to get you through. The sparks are only three damage per hit, so it's not not the greatest thing in the world ideally you want to find something a little bit more sort of aggressive but at the same time you can't go too aggressive because of that mana cost so for instance let's chuck on these energy spheres and if you keep your eye on the top right you'll see that the mana bar will start to go down a lot quicker well not too much but you can kind of see what's happening here let's chuck on those energy spheres so the, the overall damage is coming up, but at the expense of the speed. Doing good slow damage with like a big two-handed sword, for example, is good. But we're playing Noita here where you're flying around. There's bees, there's little dog things flying around. You want to be fast, but that is just one possibility of what you can do here. I haven't really grabbed too many spells as an example here because I just wanted to kind of show you the stats and what's happening with my three favourite wands. Let's go to the shop to kind of get an idea of what kind of spells we're going to be finding because they are random. So I, I didn't want to just get Sparks, Energy Spear, Ninja Star because you might find Nuke on Biome 1. So I didn't want to get too much into that. You do often see Shotgun, which is a very good spell as well. I might as well get that pulled in here. With Cheat GUI, I am using, folks, a very, very cool tool to build your own wands, to spawn perks in, to kind of cheat yourself, but to also learn as well. So let's pull up the spells. You can hold down Shift to type. So we are looking for, uh, I do believe it's called Triplicate Spell. I just had to buy the wand because I couldn't find triplicate in cheat GUI, but I've gotten the shotgun spell. It is called triplicate bolt, but it's effectively a shotgun. Now keep an eye on the mana drain, it's a little bit higher. So what is going to happen when we chuck that onto that hacked fish wand? It's going to chug it down real big. Let's have a little look. We'll do two just for the hell of it. Very nice. Let us just make sure that we've got that in the correct config. Yeah, I do believe that's the better one. So pretty good. You'll find the shotgun around, but keep an eye on that mana. It's a little bit tasty on consuming that, so... But also, if you're slow, it... You know, Noit is a game of swings and roundabouts. Something's going to be good at the expense of something else. Pretty much throughout the whole game, but... I really like the shotgun, very powerful, just keep an eye on that mana recharge because, more importantly, I failed to mention in the first video, your mana recharge does not resume. You have to hold the one for it to resume, so let's test that out. So I've drained this one, I'm going to the green wand, I'll just wait a couple of seconds and we can test that. I hope it doesn't make me a liar, so back to the fish wand. <laughs> well, apparently it does. The jury's out on that one, folks. I was always under the impression that it did. But we'll have to leave that up to the comments, and I'll have to do a bit more reading on that as well. But, hey, man, I'm real. I don't want to lie to you and pretend that I'm the perfect man for Noita. I'm just being me with my available knowledge. It's in my brain. Because I don't cheat and look stuff up beforehand, you see. Use your experience. But 
That is kind of the basics of Biome 1 wands, folks. You don't want those other wands. If you can find this, you can start to format some really powerful wands, which I will go into. So should we just have a little final rundown here? So the reasons why I like this. Maybe I can give you my experiences of why these are good. So the green wand is just very good for general DPS. Get some energy orbs on there. Maybe even a shotgun. What does that look like? Because let's face it, folks, you can't always find reliably the things you want to build wands. You might not see a doubler for the whole run. You might not see if it's, you might not even see a chainsaw. I know I always don't, but I always cream myself when I do because I know of the magic possibilities of getting that recharge time down. So what does that look like? Very fair on the green wand. I've only got shotguns here, but again, the mana cost. It's a bit heavy, isn't it? But I like to. More often than not, I do believe on Biome 1 you will find, I think it may be two, maybe even three of these energy spheres. If you see this, you're in for a good time. It's just reliable at 10 damage per hit. You can see their average DPS going up. You will pretty much one or two hit most enemies on level one for sure. Two, I think you'll still be reliably killing stuff. Uh, this can take me to level four. It, it's that good in my opinion. Chuck on some random stuff because of that shuffling. You you won't go far wrong. I do believe, for a shuffle wand at least, that it's the best outright. Just because of the stats. It's it's very reliable, folks. Trust me on, on this one at least. The fish wand. Ah, oh, the fish wand. The stories of the fish wand. Chaining a trigger... Death Cross early game is tremendously useful for level 3 and 4. So that would basically be a trigger spark. Spark being this one. I haven't gone into triggers today. I didn't want to get too broad here. But triggers are the little yellow star that you'll see on the spells that you know. That means that when you shoot that and hit that trigger spell, it will then, in that chain... Do the next one. You kind of have to use non-shuffles for that for it to work. But like I said, let's not go too into that. But I've had trigger spells with this fish wand, uh, many other things. It's a little bit slow, but overall very reliable. It's pretty much the first non-shuffle wand you're going to find for free in the level. There may be some others, but they might have lower capacity and just, ah, just not that good. And the gold one, this used to be my favourite, especially the other variety of this wand. The uh, higher cast delay but slower recharge. You could chuck on those green bouncing spells and it would be like an MG42 just brrr, without chainsaws, without doublers. But at the expense of spread and at the, at the expense of it becoming less useful down the way due to that mana cost... And due to things like sparks and the green bouncers, just the damage falls off pretty much after level after level three, really. I mean, you may be struggling with a gold bouncing wand, green bouncing gold wand, sorry, by level three, because those enemies get tougher, man. But three very good wands, just... They make me very happy to see, and I hope that my explanation of the stats, what's happening with the reload time, will help you out, folks. Like I said, I've played this for some time, but I'm still trying to figure things out. We're still finding combinations where what shouldn't work, works. We might chuck in a surprise chainsaw or a lightsaber. A lightsaber is basically concentrated light, it's called. I call it a lightsaber. It looks like a green one. I do actually believe we have one in the shop here. Let me show you. I think it's the one on the end. Yeah, those ones are kind of like chainsaws, but also very powerful in their own right. But I won't go into it yet. But yeah, I think that's going to be it from me, folks. Just to kind of give you a basic understanding. And don't don't be scared don't be scared if you can get your hands on that fish wand play around with ordering your spells and we'll get into we'll get into more sort of beefy presets for you to kind of make your way in biome one but get your hands on those ones folks you're gonna be having a good time
And yes, those are my top three picks, everyone, for Biome 1 Wands. And this will conclude our lesson of Wands School today. We will, like I said, move into more strategic choices down the way. Spell wrapping, all of the good stuff that I use on my streams. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hoped this helped leave comments below if you want to ask me some questions i will do my best to answer we have a great little community here that always tries and that always tries to instill knowledge uh, for noia players because it's such a obscure abstract game there's no real wrong answer the only right answer really is how powerful is your wand and like i said there's many ways to go about it there's many ways to skin a cat as i would say one of my favorite sayings but yeah i think that's all for this lesson folks i don't want to overwhelm you and i hope you enjoyed because i always enjoy making these noita videos and last but not least if you have enjoyed i would love a subscription and ring in the bell and all of the youtubey stuff i stream four times a week and i'm also most recently and more importantly a full-time content creator now so i can stream when i want i don't have to worry about getting up for work or any of that stuff so i'm here for the long haul we're going to be getting more proper youtube content that i've been teasing for months on end it's finally here i'm free of my free of the shackles so to speak so come along with me with that journey and uh yes i'll see you in the next one yeah